We should have Melissa Hills do a theme song for Worst Marathon Ever. Doom Steve, Worst Marathon Ever. You're listening. You are singing. To That Gets My Goat. That Gets My Goat. <laughs> It is going. Welcome, everyone, to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Uh, sorry, this is not that. It's That Gets My Goat. The Dune Steve's That Gets My Goat. We don't usually say that, though, do we? We just say That Gets My Goat, huh? <sighs> and then we say... Well, this is our third ever episode, so we're just still yeah, kind of We're still trying to out. figure it out. This is uh, the worst marathon ever. And I wanted to make sure that it really felt like the worst, so I, I thought I'd do that off the top. And I'm sure people are, are thinking that, too. Yeah. Every time they hear us, they're like, wow, this is the worst marathon ever. Ever! Ever. Part of my motivation for this marathon was the last one we did was in October. We uh-huh. did the 13 Nights of Halloween, which I had a lot of fun doing. And that was the first... Marathon we had done where we actually read our stories too. Oh yeah, and uh, I thought that uh, I thought it was it worked well and and it was more work than the February one, but it was still it felt worth it because we had stories and because uh, the reaction was really positive. There were a couple of people that said it made their day, and one guy, the guy in New York, that rode around on his bicycle because oh right yeah Tom Ten Credy who. Or I wonder how you say his name. Probably not Creddy. Probably Creedy. Huh? I don't know. Anyway. Tom Tancredi. Tan, Tancredi. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of those things where you don't know somebody actually in person. You just have seen emails from them and stuff like that. But yeah, that was when, uh, what was the hurricane called? Do you remember? Hurricane Her- Sandy? Okay. Sandy sounds right. It was Hurricane Sandy hit New York, and the place was FUBAR for like... No, a... no. That one was Hurricane Rosie O'Donnell. Oh. The one you're thinking of was... Right. Sorry. But yeah, it left New York paralyzed right at Halloween, and so everybody was just like, Halloween schmalloween. I need water and power and food. And so, yeah, you know, uh, the things went by the wayside, and Tom was telling us how it... Helped remind him that things were going to go back to normal or whatever. You know, it was it was a temporary thing, and he was he was out riding his bike around, listening to episodes and seeing people standing in line at the library. You know, because they, that was they, the only place yeah, that had Wi-Fi. They huddled around the library so they could connect to the internet, and they were standing in line places to get water jugs filled with clean water, and it was just uh, interesting stuff. But yeah, it helped keep him grounded and not let him freak out or whatever, which is awesome. You know, you know, super cool when something that you do helps like that. You know what I mean? I and mean, we, we do this cause we love it and we don't expect it to, <laughs> to do something like that. When we find out that it has, boy, that's, that's cool. Well, anyway, he sent us this really nice email about it and he said, you know, what, what would I have to pay you guys to do another marathon like that? And, and so I fully expected, oh, well, maybe in February we'll do all the whole month again. And and then th- th- this year has been difficult yeah, it with, has. with doing the podcast and, and stuff. I mean, we have done a lot of that gets my goats, but the regular show has suffered and uh, and it just wasn't possible to do a marathon then. But I wanted to. I wanted to do something and I thought it was fun just sitting down and, and recording a bunch of things and then putting them out and seeing the people respond. I mean, especially him, but other people dug it too, you know, and they, uh, I, they, I've, I've said this a million times, but you start to foster a relationship with the people that you hear every day, whether you actually know them or not, but you hear them talk about their lives or their families or their likes and their dislikes, and you start to associate them as friends or coworkers or something like that. It's just from repetition, it's from familiarity. And with a show like ours, where we just talk and talk and talk and talk, it certainly lends itself to that. I mean, this is basically one of those talk radio type shows where we have a daily topic or whatever, you know, and we're going to open the, open it up to calls, yeah. open the phone lines. Maybe we can do that someday. We'll have a live episode where we open it up to the phone lines. I wonder if we could figure that out. It can't be that hard. We could take Skype calls at least. Right? I know there are podcasts that do that, that yeah. do a live podcast and you can Twitter your questions or call in. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I, but that seems like too much work for me. Someday we're going to do... <laughs> when we have this study all set up with all our equipment, it'll be easy. We're going to do a, a Skype call episode in the next couple. And we have done that before, but those are never live. Those right. are edited together. And, and uh, I'm trying to remember how we've done those in the past. The, did they send us their audio and I just edited it in? I think that might have been how we did Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how we did it. But uh, yeah, Clay Duggar did, a, he did an, an episode for us, and I thought it would be really cool to have him in on the conversation because yeah. he produced it. Um, we meant to we do that. It. Yeah, we meant to do that with Renee when she uh, produced her last episode, and then things just didn't work out for it. So Brian's the only one that was uh, a guest host so far. Well, Appy has been in here, but it's not the same. True, yeah, that's not the same as a Skype. And we've someday we'll we'll get our NMX episode out <laughs> that yeah. we did with everybody. We had Marshall and. And Scribe and, and Abby and, and Renee and Brian all in on that one. That was cool. It was. It was really neat. And, you know, people are already talking about next year's New Media Expo and making plans. And it sounds like, you know, it's going to be fun. And, and there's going to be they're, – they're talking about giving us a whole room just for podcasting. And I thought, wow, what is, that's really neat. And – uh, my ambitious wheels start turning again and saying, oh, we can do this and I'm going to write this and this will be ready by then. And there's never enough time or hours in the day. Wait, time and hours in the day are the same thing. There's never enough energy either to get all those things done. But but you can do some of it. Last week I challenged you that we have to write a story. Each of us is going to write a story that's about 2,000-ish words that we can use as uh, one of the panels where we read the story live and then discuss it afterwards. I have no memory of this. You have no memory of You right, challenged well, me and I accepted? Let me re-challenge you then. You and I are both going to write one of those and we're going to read them through and we'll decide uh, which ones we'll go with. Maybe we'll go with both or, you know, I'm sure other people will have stories as well that we'll have to uh, perhaps fight for a uh, time with. I know last time Marshall had a story that he wanted to go through if we had a chance and we never got the chance, so maybe he'll... That's say, too bad. He needs to be first then. Yeah, maybe he'll say, no, listen, folks. Here's the deal. Sit down. Record this. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I think this time around we'll be much more organized too, which will be cool. And we'll have a lot more to offer. We also have these little devices. To yeah, we're, we both Last got these. Last year we had to set up the huge mics that, you know, we always use for the Dune Stephen. Which I'll still bring again, and we'll see if we can get it all going on. All right. So By then, though, everybody's going to have one of these that's things. That's probably true. But, yeah, we'll see how many we can get in one room. How many mics set up. Get them all in one room. Well, see that we sounds can, fun. How many people on mics at once. And then how much of a garbled, terrible podcast that turns out to be. <laughs> See, that's something that we don't know. You edited the, the what, what was it called? The barbecue sketch. Uh-huh. Which we recorded like that with a right. bunch of people in that motel room. Hotel room. What kind of experience was that? You said that you could sometimes hear laughter that you had to edit out. But what about reverb or bad sound from another mic? The, um, the audio itself came through. Great, I thought. Uh, there wasn't much of a problem with that. Yeah, there was a little bit of laughter you could hear. But I think in that particular case, everybody was trying to be quiet. And we were all, we had lines, so we took our time. We'll see. We did a, a post-show episode for a story that we read. And yeah, that one we had everybody just, you could just start talking. And we'll see how that comes out. That one's the one that I'm more worried about. How well, many? I will try and work on that so that will show up sometime. Because, yeah, it, it's one of those that it shouldn't take a tremendous amount of work, but maybe it will. I don't know, at least. Yeah, it all depends. But it's already got the whole episode recorded, so we yeah. should just do it. Circumstances are, I've found, the things that uh, are the biggest problems. A lot more so than what you run into actually doing the editing. <laughs> it's the things that keep you from doing the editing <laughs> that are the biggest problems. But yeah, so ambition. You talked about being ambitious and doing this uh, 
marathon. Now, why did you decide to do a marathon now? Did it have oh, anything God. to do with uh, the the last show of the night that that week that you were uh, in San Diego? I don't know that it did, but it, it, I tend to call you on the Saturday night after Comic-Con to tell you how the day was. Ever since I started doing this thing where I get up super early in the morning so I can go to Hall H, as is tradition, the last panel of the night, and it's not even a panel, it's just the Kevin Smith question and answer thing. And, and uh, Kevin, he just he's lazy. He just shows up and he says, hey, everybody, I'm going to open it up to questions. This year was worse than than usual. I mean, usually he didn't even say "Hey, everybody." He just said, "I'm opening it up to questions." <laughs> it was like that. I, usually, he'll have something prepared and he'll tell him, tell us what we, he's working on, and that. And then he says, "Okay, well, let's open it up to questions." And this time, he didn't. He, he just said, "Hey, questions, go." Um, <laughs> but I, the guy really loves to uh, interact with the with his fans and he loves to tell stories he loves to talk i mean the guy's got like six podcasts or or more and so you know the guy loves to talk and if you've ever read any of his stuff it's just people talking to each other but i mean i can totally relate to that because i really enjoy this and when we did the panel at new media expo apparently we over prepared that we didn't need to prepare we could have just talked and so that stuff is fun and he uh, this year Ended up telling a couple of stories that I'd already heard him tell. I think he's told the same exact story he told last year at that thing. But at one point, somebody stood up and said, I don't know if you remember this, but two years ago, you talked about changing your life and realizing that too many times you would listen to people say, say, why? Why do you want to do this? And that you had stopped hanging around with those people and, and you sought out people that said, why not? And you wanted to, you wanted to be a why not kind of person. Where if something jumped into your head, you're like, you know what? Why not? I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it instead of coming up for with excuses to not do it. And the guy says, you know, that really inspired me, and and I was sort of on, you know, I I, I was on the fence as to what I was going to do with my life, and that got me up off the fence and. You know, I moved out and I'm trying to pursue my dreams and here is where I am in doing that. And I just wanted to thank you. And Kevin is like, right on, man. Thanks. But I was just like, oh, my gosh, because two years ago, the why not speech lit a fire under me. I was just so excited and called you. And I was just like, oh, wow, Kevin just said this coolest stuff. He also talked about blowjobs. And and I want to do both of them. And you're just like, oh, great. Not that again. <laughs> I was just all amped. And I was like, we're going to do this. And we're going to we're gonna be brave. And we're going to podcast all the time. And we're going to sell our own work and all that stuff. And, you know, those sort of things wear off. Anytime you go to a motivational speech or uh, you read a book about, you know, be your best self. Grab destiny by the horns. Those kind of things. that They, they can pump you up. But eventually that adrenaline is going to wear off. And... It's going to be up to you to to motivate yourself and to, to find ambition within within yourself. I mean, maybe not. Maybe if you're married and you've got a wife that's really supportive, she kicks you in the butt from time to time and says, "Hey," and you can depend on somebody else. But I've found in my life that it's going to be me most of the time. That's, yeah, it that has to do. It. it comes down to you in the end. People can give you a speech to win one for the Gipper, and it'll get you all excited for a little while. But at a certain point, the problems will come up. You know, the obstacles will come up in your path and you can give up at that point or you can keep working your way through it, you know, and uh, it's all up to you. You can't just keep saying, why not? Why not? Get yourself a shirt that says, why not? on it. Well, and yes, you had your own parallel experience with the Dr. Seuss book and or the Dr. Seuss YouTube video <laughs> that uh, that motivated the crap out of you and helped you. I, I, is it fair to say that you wouldn't have an ankle cast if it weren't for that? Probably not. I don't know that I would have uh, gone there. I almost don't have an ankle cast anymore already, <laughs> although I recorded one yesterday oh, or good, today, good. and I have it ready to post. I just was having problems. I was getting an error every time I tried to post it today, which was a pain in the butt. But yeah... I think that I think about that every now and then, and if I ever throw that 
because I actually recorded the audio off of that and put it onto my iPod and would listen to it every now and then. And every time I do, like every time, it inspires me again. And it gets me excited and it makes me cry like a little baby. Um, and yeah, it, it, it does help. And giving, giving yourself a, another shot in the arm or whatever, booster shot of the vaccine against laziness is handy. And I think I really need one of those right now. I'm, I'm hoping, and I talk about this in the ankle cast that's uh, going to be out well before this comes out, that uh, I'm hoping that I can get re-motivated, rejuvenated, I guess is a okay. good word. That's a real word on this trip to Canada because I'm going to have a week and a little bit more probably where there's going to be little to do. We are going camping for a couple days, so I'll probably be like hiking in the wilderness and crap like that. But uh, for the most part, there's going to be a lot of sitting around at my wife's parents' house, which my wife loves all that. I'm not quite as keen on it because, uh, you know, it's not my family. So I don't have years and years and years and years of uh, familiarity and etc. So... When they're just sitting around doing nothing, they can, you know, just talk and have a good time and stuff. And I get bored. And so I have printed out a whole bunch of uh, stories that I need to read. The 50 bazillion stories from the triple word score contest I have ready to read. I have stuff for the show that I have to work on. I have uh, story ideas that I can uh, work on for writing. I'd like to do a little of all that. Unfortunately, usually our trip to Canada is two weeks long. Because of the move and everything, it's probably not going to be as long as it usually is. You would prefer that it be two weeks long? Well, when it's two weeks long, I definitely find time. I pretty much have written a story every time we go when it's two weeks long. I find time to write something because of that. And yeah, I don't know uh, if a week is going to be quite enough to do everything that I put on my list. But uh, I'm hoping to get rejuvenated and really get going because, you know, there's certain things, there's goals that we talked about that we set out that we wanted to do. And eh, we they're still kind of down the line. You know, I mean, we talked about putting more of our stories on the show. And we haven't gotten to that yet. The idea was we finish off all the other stories that we've got hanging around. And then we get into that. We're still they're still hanging around <laughs> and we still haven't finished them all off. To force ourselves to be like, okay, there's not a show unless it's our story. Let's do this. Yes, that's right. That was your idea of motivating ourselves to go. It's like we get together on Mondays, and if if we haven't got a story, then it's up to one of us to have written one for that. And by the time this airs, the calling will have aired. And gosh, I hope that the reaction is positive. <laughs> if it's negative, then yeah, you this will all air posthumously. <laughs> but it would be neat if people were like, oh, yeah, bring it on. More stories from you guys. Or or you have a fan in me now. And, and so anytime your name shows up, I'll be happy to listen to it kind of thing. Because that's, that's – I don't know what is wrong with my personality, but it always resets. We go to one of these things or we hear something or you listen to the Rocky soundtrack and you're like, yeah, I'm going to grab <laughs> life by the by the short hairs and I'm going to make it happen. and And then – a couple of days goes by, or maybe not even that long, and I reset to, mm, you know, nobody loves me, I don't want to do it, you know, kind of thing. And the fear comes creeping back in. I hate that, and, and I, I, I don't know how to overcome it, because it's been with me for a long, long time. Yeah, I, th I, I don't know if this will help at all, because I'm sure you've heard crap like this before, but I think basically the only way to overcome the fear is to face it again and again and again until it's not, there's no fear anymore. You know what I mean? It's like this podcast. When we started this podcast, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of an outgoing person, but not hugely. I remember how much I floundered in the earliest shows, how hard I found it to speak and to just be out there and stuff like that. And as we've done it again and again and again, you know, weekly, monthly, yearly now, it's just, it's gone. I don't, I don't have that problem at all anymore. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
there, I can stand up in front of a crowd and not feel nervous hardly at all. You know, if I, you know, as long as I don't have absolutely nothing prepared or something, <laughs> depending on what the crowd is too, I suppose. But yeah, I can stand up and, and speak and not worry about it to, to all sorts of people. I don't have that fear. I, I'm not afraid to do that kind of stuff. So I think it might be a similar kind of a thing where, you know, you, you face it and it sucks and you face it again and it sucks and you face it and you keep facing it and pretty soon it sucks a little less and then pretty soon it's like, eh, it's no big deal. And then you're just like, yeah, no, bring it on. I love it. Try and knock me down. You can. I know how good my stuff is. I mean, I don't know how it'll be, but I think it's probably got to be something like that. So hopefully our goal of making your stories be on the show again and again and none of the stories be mine um, will help you to, to overcome that fear. Well, that, not reset back to uh, ground zero every time. The fallout from me running my stories on the show should be that you're like, dang, I've got it. I, I'm going to do my story. It's, when is it my turn? It's, it's, our, it's our turn down here. That's right. Up there, it's their turn. It's their time. Anyway, sorry. So, so there's those things. I mean, I've written a couple of stories with the sole purpose of producing them on the show, and we keep not doing it. But I don't know that that's because of excuses. It's just because of, you know, a bunch of different dominoes falling at the same time and you moving away and not having a place and having the world's worst schedule. Like, how many people did you lose at your work? Because it always seemed like, well, we just hired somebody new, but we lost another guy. And so I still have to do that horrible yeah, shift. Yeah, it was kind of like that for a while. It's been pretty difficult for the last few months. And on top of that, it's summer. So everybody's taking vacation as well. So, yeah, it's been pretty rough. For once, it's going to be me taking vacation, at least for the next couple of weeks. So that'll be nice. Oh, okay, so let me just finish the Kevin Smith thing a tiny bit. I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, it's beside the point exactly what he said. It's just last year, I didn't feel like I was particularly inspired by him because he told negative stories. Because he's had some bad experiences, he feels like, well, he's done with Hollywood and he doesn't need to make any more movies. He has more fun just doing what you and I are doing, getting together with a friend and podcasting and he sells advertising and uh, he's got TV shows and stuff that, where he just sits around and talks. And so he's making enough money that that's all he has to do. And so he said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make any more movies. Um, then eventually somebody came to him and said, well, what about one more clerks movie? And he's like, okay, I'll go out the way I came in. Uh, you know, that will be my last movie. And he wrote the script. And because the Weinsteins made the last Clerks movie, they have first refusal, you know, the the right to to buy or not buy uh, that movie or to, to produce. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. They they technically own the rights to sequels of Clerks. And so right. he gave it to them and gave the, had to do all this crap about budget proposals and have three different levels of budget for how much money they were willing to put into it and depending on where they shot, how much it would cost and all that. See, it just sounded exhausting. It sounded like the kind of stuff that you and I always talk about. We wish we had a guy, a third person who was part of the Dune Steve, who would deal with that kind of stuff. Somebody who looked forward to that, who said, you know what, I'm going to make a couple of calls and we're going to get a sponsor for the next episode. You know, I'm going to make a couple of calls and we'll see who can run our promo. Or I'm going to make a couple of calls and... You know, we're going to have a special guest on the on the show or whatever. You know, people that I'm would make do... a couple of calls, and there's going to be some sweet tale over here. For oh wait, that's that's the other guy. That's not that dude, right? Well, see, I wish I had somebody like that too. <laughs> but you and I are not business oriented. We're we're very very. I, I I don't know if you, you're supposed to call them left brained or creative, but but numbers have never worked for me. I'm not good with math, and 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 whenever somebody in college talked about the the monetary part of making movies or the, the actual physical labor, I was just like, oh, I don't want to do any of that. I don't even want to think about that. I just want to think up the idea and watch it happen. And then we've talked about that too. It's, it's so fun to record a story, but then to edit it and to put in the voices and to put in the sound effects and to put into the music, that makes us old. Yeah, there is a lot of work to that for sure. But there is a lot of creativity to it as well, so sometimes it can be rewarding. Just depends. Okay, I mean, and yeah, you're totally right. Like Brian Lincoln, I think gets a charge out of 
trying to find a, a, a way of producing something that hasn't he hasn't done it before that way. And for me, I was just like, if I could do it exactly the same way every single time, I would because I don't enjoy that part as much as the voice acting and, and his writing goes. Anyway, so Kevin said he was he was waiting to find out what the Weinstein brothers will say. I mean, because if they pass on Clerks Three, then he can just make it himself. He's got enough money now that he'll just make it like through a Kickstarter or I mean, I don't know, or but, through credit cards. Yeah, like he did the first one, and he said that it was going to be weeks before the Weinsteins were going to get back to him. And he's just sat around and he didn't know what to do. And he had talked with one of his friends about a, a an idea. Uh, they read a, a news article that just lit his imagination on fire, and he said, you know, somebody ought to make a movie about that. I would love to see a movie about that. And as he was sitting around waiting, he said, you know what? I'm going to write that. I'm going to do that. He he why not it himself, and he sat up and he wrote a screenplay, and he said, I'm not going to retire. I'm going to make this movie. He's like, I might make it before Clerks 3. I might make it after Clerks 3. I'm not done. And he was so excited and sharing this with us. And it was infectious. The whole crowd was just like, oh, a boy, dude. Good job. Because I guess he had just been burnt out so much on, on running into negative people. And people, you know, he, he talked about one of his his heroes just breaking his heart and, and showing him, you know, that Hollywood is not all glamorous and cool and all that stuff. And I, I, th- I felt like Kevin had just had his spirit broken. And he's like, you know, what? it's not worth it anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. And now he's suddenly reborn and he want, he's rejuvenated, like you said. And he, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to make at least two more movies and I might not retire. And that was really neat to hear. And it got me excited. And I was like, wow, good for him. Because there's so many things that we talk about maybe doing and it would be fun. And, and, but it would be work. And the work is scary or, or the, the, the specter of somebody not liking it is, is frightening too. And, and for months now, for over a year, I've been afraid of the calling coming up, that story, and people not liking it, or people saying it didn't deserve to win, or people saying, you know, this is just like that episode of Bones where, or whatever, oh, I hate that. (laughs) I've jumped on you before about saying stuff like that. It's just one of my weaknesses is that somebody is going to say, you just ripped off something else, you know. And now, when this episode actually airs, all that's behind us. Who knows? I mean, maybe it will be a negative, there will be a negative reaction, but I hope not. If there's a positive reaction, then, like you said, I've, I've taken another step. And it will make it all the easier to share the next thing and the next thing. And, and not everybody's going to like all that stuff, I understand. For example, and gosh, I feel like this episode has gone on way, way too long. But every, every year I enter that Masters of the Macabre contest over oh, the Oh, is that where they say that? I thought it was Masters of Macabre. That's right. It I've is, heard it, is it said macabre before. You sure it's macabre? Uh, it, Masters of Macaber. Oh, and, it's macaber. Oh. And they'll give you like a. a but those a prompt. are those things that you toss at the Scottish games, right? There you Macabers. go. Macabers. Yeah, that's the right. There was, one of those, there was one of those in the Bear and the Bow. <laughs> and I entered it for the third time this year. And I knew that the, the deadline was sometime in August. And so I, uh, I wrote the story. And then I re went through the story again, you know, to do a revision. And I realized when I was doing the revision that the story is really bad. <laughs> it's really, really weak. And I thought, you know, nobody's going to vote for this story. It's not good. But I don't care. I wrote it for the contest. I'm going to send it in. You know, people are going to say it doesn't even belong on horror, the Horror Addicts website because it's not horror. It's not scary. It's not You had a chance to be a Masters of the Macabre, and you blew it! I blew it. And yes, that you've, you've beaten me to the punch. Anyway, uh, just this week, I, I said, okay, well, I see, the, the, with the contest, you not only have to write the story and send them the text, you have to record the story. And, and that's no problem for me, except for it has to fit into their time frame, and that's always difficult, because they're always longer than I expected them to be. Even right. if I talk really, really fast and read the whole narrative like this... It still ends up being a couple minutes over or, you know, in some cases like 10 minutes over, which is just awful. So I, I checked to, to make sure, okay, you know, is it August 15th? Is it August 10th? Oh, geez, what if it's August 1st? I better find out when the deadline for this thing is. And it had already passed. Oh. And suddenly I'm like, no, 
this story was great. This story was, I worked, I wrote my ass off on this story and I'm going to send it in and I, and come on, man, that's not fair. And I, that night I sent an email to like the, I don't know, webmaster or something like that. And I said, Hey, I missed the deadline on this, but I have written the story. I just, I thought it was in August, you know, will you let me uh, send it in? And, and I never heard back from the guy. And so I emailed the host of the show, of the podcast and said, Hey, I wrote the story. Um, and I haven't heard back from the guy. Can can I still send it in to you guys? Because I figured, you know, this is one of those contests that only like six people enter. Mm-hmm. That they would rather have my story than not have it. But she didn't answer either. And so I was just like, oh. Even though I know the story's not good, I'm disappointed that I can't enter the story. And and so maybe that's progress. Maybe that's not. I Maybe it's it's coming to terms with the fact that not everything that I write is great. Well, the good thing is, now we have another not good story that we can put onto the Dune Steve from you. (laughs) It's it's, it's not good enough to run on the Dune Steve. But the the thing with the contest, the reason I like those contests so much is that they motivate me to write stuff I would never have written otherwise. I mean, the, the, whatever you call it, the factors, the things that they ask for specifically in this story made me think of an idea that I never would have thought of. And then I had to go and do research because, you know, it was something I wasn't familiar with. And having done the research, that produces something that I would never have come up with with my own imagination. I don't know. Are there still kids podcasts out there? I remember there being one that you really liked that just, it made me grip my hands into tight little white fists where the blood would completely leave my fingers and there'd be little crescent moons on my palms. I hated it so much. Does that still exist? I don't think so. Oh, okay, good. The blood dripping from your palms scared them away. No, but there, there's that one that's a youth podcast that ran one of Rick Kennett's stories. The uh, uh, cast, of cast of Wonders. There you go. That's a youth-ish podcast, right? Or does that count? Is that well? Remind me why a that doesn't uh, that doesn't count or what is that episode has definitely aired. <laughs> what is a youth podcast? The stories written by youth? I don't know that it's stories written by youth. I think it's stories more aimed at youth. It's it's, it's like a podcast that would be for ki- kids or for at least teens. Okay, well, uh, I'll tell you what. If if this thing falls through and it looks like it has, I will send them that story as bad as it is because it's 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 a youth oriented kind of thing. Cool. It's got a, a, a kid main character. It's really family friendly, and that's part of why I was just like, oh no. <laughs> This, the, you know, horror addicts are not yeah. going to sit for this. It's like, why uh, why did I make that guy say golly again? Oh. But I, I remember you talking about, you know, that you had written stories specifically with your kids in mind and all that. And it it, it takes a different part of your brain or hemisphere. And, and yeah, with horror, that's got to be way more difficult. You know, the R.L. Stein books or whatever. I wonder if that guy, if that guy even exists, has to pair things back and say, whoa, 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 it was, I was getting into real horror there for a minute. Or if, you know, it's just his mind works that way that is like good PG rated scary stuff. Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Our film professor, uh, the, the producing teacher, he had produced a, a horror movie in like 1982, 84 uh, called One Dark Night. And he said specifically they had made it to be rated PG. Because they felt like there was a a vacuum, you know, there 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 was there were so few horror movies that were okay for kids, you know, Mm -hmm. everything was just so easily R rated, and that was during the boom when horror was making just a ton, you know, the slasher movies and all that stuff. And he Uh said, we made so much money off that movie, and he he kept hearing, you know, that it was because of that. Because kids could go to it, because yeah. families would go to it, and all that. Because little kids could have a spend the night party for their birthday, and they could rent that movie. Yeah. Instead of Creep Show, which is what we watched at the spend the night <laughs> party that I saw, and I was freaked out for years because of it. Yeah. Well, well, I'm sure we'll talk more about horror and Creep Show and all that stuff if we do a, a Halloween marathon this year. And okay, yeah. So to put a positive spin on the whole thing, I do want to run another Halloween marathon, and I do want to share. Stories when you were talking about going to Canada and having nothing to do, and I don't know that you have nothing to do, but going camping or or whatever it is, those are the times when I'm the most wanting to write and the most wanting to create. And and when we went to the cabin, it was just this month. Um, 
Once everybody had gone to sleep, that's the first thing I did is I sat down and I wrote a story specifically for our 13 nights of, of Halloween, oh, cool. 2013. And when I was at Comic-Con and I got in line, you know, at 430 in the morning and just sat there, that's another thing that I did as does. I got open, I opened the laptop and I re- decided to write a story and I got about 85% of it done. And then the laptop just turned off. And then when I restarted it, all of that was gone. <laughs> and I was just furious. But because I knew I still had hours in the line, I was like, okay, well, I'm not really going anywhere. I'll do it again. And so I got about 75% of it rewritten. And then it shut off again? <laughs> no. I mean, I, I assiduously saved. You started saving and saved every time. And, saved. You and I used a, a different program, one that would automatically Auto save. save and and open a, you know, retrieved document if something happened and it, you know, ran out of battery or whatever the deal was. But boy, anyway, uh, so I think I know what you're talking about. When you're somewhere stuck, when I'm at home, there are a million things I could do. Yeah, there's so many distractions that can keep you away from, you know, your your actual goals that it's, yeah, it's super easy to just follow those distractions instead. But yeah, when you're stuck and you have nothing else to do, it seems like the best time to, you know, I've, and I've done that. I took a bunch of papers with me. The It wasn't the last time. I think it was two times ago that I went. And yeah, I would go out each morning and sit out in their, in their backyard, listen to the birds chirp and write a story. And I wrote a whole story and two stories, actually. One was really short. It was a... a Shortest Ghost Story. Slash fiction. It wasn't Shortest Ghost Story, but it was very similar. I believe it was called... Dang, I can't remember what it was called, but it was on Bosley Gravel's Cavalcade of Horror or whatever it was that he had that website. Wait, really? Yeah. I I mean, I remember, but it's just like you got that one published. That's neat, man. The other one, the longer one, didn't get published, but I had never sent it out anywhere. I think I had some people read it, and they gave me some suggestions on what I needed to do, and then I didn't do them. (laughs) You and still can. Maybe you should take that with you, too. It sits fallow, oh. yielding no fruit that I might feed my family with. <laughs> I hear you, man. I, I've done the same. And uh, and we want to not do the same. I, I, yeah. Oh, one last thing. In that calling episode, you said you should start a Rish Outcast where you read your stories and then you talk about them. Do you remember that? Uh-huh. I, I mean, think. it was months ago we recorded that, but hopefully it just aired. And it's fresh on everybody's mind. And that I, that really excited me. That very night, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to record an introduction and tell people this is welcome to the outcast. And this is the first episode. And from now on, I'm going to record stories. And yeah, I did like three stories that way. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'll start putting those out too. And unless there's just, I mean, unless I lose that spark of ambition, you know, and which, I mean, inevitably it will be hard, but... Yeah, I think that... Well, I'll just have to motivate you every now and then like you do with me where you send me an email saying, you know, I know you've got stuff going on, but it's been six months since you put anything on your blog or did a, a ankle cast, so maybe you ought to uh, do one, douche. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, maybe I'll have to do that to keep you going the same way that you do it to keep me going. We'll have to see how that goes. I, I have a feeling that it'll be a while before you uh, run out of spark and, and energy on this one. You've got like f- several episodes in the can, and you've just been waiting for me to finally finish the callings so that you can start putting them out. Yes, but at the same time, I don't know how to to post them. True, but... <laughs> I that... mean, I'd have to upload them to box.net and just do it that way, although that works. That, that doesn't take much at all. It's the easiest thing in the world. But, uh, okay, well, we've talked a lot about this, and hopefully uh, it's been a nice change. Well, we talked about Comic-Con here, too. I was going to say a nice change from all the Comic-Con talk, but oh, well. Kind of what the Comic-Con talk was all leading towards is this, our annual inspirational Kevin Smith episode. Thank you, Kevin, for leading the way for us all. He is the world's laziest dude. (laughs) <laughs> and he's fat, and he's a stoner, and he's just not motivated. But if he can get up and say, oh, I'm not going to retire. I'm not going to do, you know, I'm going to be this guy that I always wanted to be, then anybody can. There you go. That sounds like a good final uh, thing. Maybe we should put that on our shirts this year. 
If Kevin Smith, the world's laziest man, can do it, then anyone can. <laughs> That'll be our new slogan. No. <laughs> All right, folks. Hey, thank you for listening to another marathon episode. That's right. We'll see you uh, next time. Good night. Bye. That Gids My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license for some reason.